Alice, my friend Ned Star- Snark is not going to be happy with me again today. Why? What did you do today? I am dating again. You're dating again? I am dating again, yes. I am dating again. I am in love. I'm sorry about that. I'm re- I'm on a big tooth tear recently. I think it started from AOC. Now it's Elisa Heinerscheid, Bud Light's <laughs> VP of Marketing. Did we play this last night? No, we didn't. Okay. Got this this morning. This makes me so happy. This, mm-hmm. She's the VP of Marketing. There's a whole interview with her. I could just watch the whole thing. She is so, she is so wonderfully unstable, psychotic, and pretty at the same time. I am, I am. Uh, let me tell you something. In the nineties, how 90s, much do you think she makes per year? Probably. I would say in the mid. Million? I would yeah. I was gonna say in the mid to high. Yeah. Uh, six figures. So here's my girl. She's the one who came up with the Bud Light thing. She's got her son's picture, her son's artwork is behind her, including one of a, the pride flag. We are not shocked <laughs> by any of this, but here we go. Well, I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And Destroy it. It, it was, <laughs> this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand there will be no future for bud light so i ha- so for, before we go on here and look at her teeth wonderful look at, um the brand is in decline it, it is beer is in decline except for craft beer even though yeah, it's although still light beer even though isn't it's still, as in decline it's still a huge market share mm-hmm. bud light still is the number one seller i think yeah but it's just it's like it's, all of these People are changing habits, etc. His culture is changing. It always happens. It's always happened in the seventies. Like Schlitz was the the biggest thing around, and it's hard to find them. So anyway, uh, let's get back to her. You're going to hear some buzzwords. The buzzwords are going to come a flying. I had this super clear mandate. It's like we mm-hmm. need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And- Everything she just said there is a marketing weasels. Is in a marketing weasels playbook. Evolve and elevate mm-hmm. this iconic brand. Evolve and elevate. The same way the geniuses came up with the idea that we're going to turn Kentucky Fried Chicken into KFC. Yes, we've evolved and elevated. You know, because Kentucky Fried Chicken was misleading people into assuming, I guess, that it was a chicken-centric Just fried place. chicken. <laughs> right. So, it, so it's, it's all these... I hate, And I hate it when people do this. I hate it with the IHOP. I hate it with Duncan. Just... Leave it with the founder's vision, okay? He got the thing off the ground. Uh, we don't need you to uh, elevate and evolve anything. But there's also like space for things to be nostalgia and retro cool. Well, sure. Right? And, like and also... people like that type of aesthetic. Also, it not everything has to be trying really hard to be super young and hip and trendy. Right, and uh, and also things come and go. They know. There was a time, like in when I was in high school, when everything was ice, but ice, uh, uh, ice, you know, it, Smirnoff ice. I remember it, those. Well, that was more when I was in high school. Yeah, though. but that's not a beer. But, bro, well, but here's the thing: is that is that everything was ice at one point, and then that way, and then, away, and then Bud Dry came out, and there was dry. But it was all horse bleep. You know, it's whatever. You're 16 years old. You're drinking illegally, and you assume it means something. It means nothing. <laughs> um, but here, back to my girl Elisa. And. My what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what is what do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means. <laughs> I feel like it we does. skipped a few steps there. Too. Yes, I'm not sure that the, that it means inclusivity at all. I don't know that it means inclusivity at all. At all, right. and, even if we all agreed that the issue with the Bud Light branding and why Bud Light has been in decline in recent years in terms of its market share. Even if we all agreed that Evolve and Elevate was the answer, I don't think inclusivity is necessarily the next place everybody's mind goes. <laughs> I no. Mean, like... No, not a beer drinker. You know, some dude... Well, the, the, here's the problem. We'll get to this. Um, by the way, in her Twitter profi- profile, it talks about how she's the first female CEO of the most iconic beer. So we see what's going on here. <laughs> You, you well, want to play actually, gender so identity games? Here we go. She's new at this. So she was hired in February, and I found this Forbes article from when she was hired. And this was like all a buzz because, you know, she's a 
trendy marketing exec in a trendy industry and they wrote and she's an historic first so they wrote about her in Forbes um this article is entitled Bud Light Signals New Era in Marketing I mean yes accurate <laughs> they were signaling a new era nobody knew how new um, the Super Bowl will kick off a new marketing era for Bud Light, and a woman is at the helm for this new direction. Elisa Heinerscheid, vice president of marketing for Bud Light, is the first woman to ever lead the popular brand. As the first woman to lead the biggest beer brand in the world, it's an amazing opportunity to really evolve and elevate Bud Light, this brand Oh my I God! Love, said Heinerscheid. She, she said that? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, she's just platitudes. She's just empty marketing platitudes. So then it talks about the um the commercial, the Super Bowl commercial for Bud Light, where it's like the husband and wife um dancing to the hold music. Yes. And how um you know it's a it's showing how uh, this campaign's meant to feel different, to be lighter and brighter with a confidence and magnetism, and it's really critical to depict real people in real places. She says, "What I need to do." Hey. Stop doing that. Is to help this I'm brand talking, evolve. Guys, I'm not, I'm not dealing with a child. That's the wires. This is my passion point. Oh, my God. Says Elisa. Oh, that's perfect. Heinerschein oh, says Bud Light as a brand. That has, is perfect. It's that's her passion a, point. You should be taking notes, Tom. I would think you would want to discover her passion point. I am. I am. I want to know more about I know nothing about the female form as it is. <laughs> Heinerschein says Bud Light as a brand has and, been. And you know what? It's such a rich girl goes to harvard goes to wharton or whatever mm -hmm. learns all the marketing just is so full of nothing she and booty jed could have a conversation imagine what was going to wharton to be english and we wouldn't understand a word of it imagine paying for wharton and you come out like this like she came out dumber from wharton i, think. I know i, I mean, know was... i feel so ashamed for loving her um Heinerscheid says Bud Light as a brand has been everything to everyone, and as a result, we've not been mindful about where it shows up. As a mother, Heinerscheid says, one strategic priority was to make sure that women were represented. Female representation is a personal passion wow. point Hold of on. mine. Hold another passion point! <laughs> right. Can you imagine that? As a mother, how does she make this? As the first woman to helm this iconic brand. How does she make this immediately about her? As right. a mother, so this is personal to me. So as a mother, and did as any the of them, first woman, as the, did any of them think to ask her, like, do, have have you ever had a Bud Light or known anyone who routinely drinks Bud Light before you became the head of marketing for as, this iconic brand? As a mother, <laughs> like, have you ever like, you know, met no, a Bud Light the, drinker, the thing Elisa? Is, the thing is, it's like we need you, Elisa, to keep all of your maternal emotions away from your day to day. On this beer. We're selling beer to men, okay? Right. We sell it most successfully in packs of 30, not packs of six. Just so you know what's happening here. This, these are not lager tastings, you know, of Ipswich Ale. This is dudes pounding beers. This is... How many people do you think Elisa knows who drink Bud Light? Like, she personally knows never, in her life. No, uh... No, the, the, her landscaper, maybe. <laughs> That's mean, it. She has never seen or known or had a conversation with somebody who has ever held a 30-pack of beer, <laughs> of Bud Light. She's never, she knows, knows, knows nobody who has a Bud Light. She, those people are gross, which is why they're being lectured, really, too. Why mm -hmm. she's browbeating them with her passion points. Mm -hmm. One strategic priority for her as a mother is to make sure that women were represented. Female representation is a real personal passion point of mine, she says. That can't be! <laughs> that's true. It can't be the third use of passion point. No, no, no. That's the second one. I just reread okay. that part because you talked over me. That came out in the commercial The Bud Light Carry, which depicts a female protagonist. Do commercials have protagonists, by the way? But <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Which depicts a female protagonist who, after buying her friends a round of beer, had to bring the glasses to her friends without spilling a drop. Is this in a quote? That part's not. This next part is. Is this part here? Okay. So We had this awesome female lead. She's cool as hell, bobbing and weaving through the bar, Heinerscheid said. And, of course, Dylan Mulvaney then makes fun of that ad campaign and that female lead in Dylan Mulvaney's, quote, hashtag Bud Light Carry uh, TikTok, where she 
pretends to like silly girls do drop all the Bud Lights on the floor because girls are stupid, clumsy idiots. Right. Can't His do passion anything. point is making fun of women. Right. So, I mean, you know, the female, I don't know how big a passion point uh, female representation is for Dylan Mulvaney, but I, I would say not high on the list. Um, this representation will continue in the Super Bowl commercial in which Kaylee is on hold and Miles brings her a Bud Light and behind the scenes, a female choreographer directed the actors. Do we think there's like a lack of female representation in the choreography industry, by the way? Uh, no, there is not. But once again, there is no representation of Bud Light drinkers in the choreography field. <laughs> there is not one. There is not one Bud Light drinker who is a car. Let me tell you one something even more. There is not one male choreographer who has ever had a Bud Light. The new era and new tagline is all about easy to drink, easy to enjoy, Heinerscheid said. When we look at this job to be done, attracting... How much did they pay for that? Attracting... So it reminds me when I worked at WRKO in 2004. Mm -hmm. We were having a rebranding, you know. Right. Which means like a, you know... Uh, they paid for a big uh, billboard. They paid a PR company or whoever. Well, but... they paid a marketing company. Mm -hmm. Huge billboard. Yeah. Uh, you know, they many meetings, whatever. And it used to be um, the, the, that um, something, it was WRKO was Boston's talk station. Mm -hmm. That was its slug line, tagline. They brought in a billboard. They brought in the marketing people. They changed all the billboards and then it changed into like WRKO, the talk of Boston, or Boston talk or something. They switched mm -hmm. it by one word. Right. And that was it. And I actually, because I was the middle receptionist, I had to sit, I had the model billboards on my desk in front of me. <laughs> right. And I was always trying to take them out away and they'd always find them. Oh, you forgot, put your billboards back up. <laughs> Holy God. Passion point. Oh my Easy God. to drink. Easy to enjoy. When we looked at this job to be done, you attracting new drinkers, we. <laughs> I'm surprised she uses the term drinkers, but, but. They don't mean she doesn't mean drinkers like you mean it. She means it as an alternative to saying customers. Right. Okay. Okay. So these are fans. Right. What was the fans thing yesterday that we she had? She said somewhere uh, about fans in this. I article, thought that was a different Mulvaney I think this was... thing. But um, I. What's incredible is this is her what what it meant to me as a woman what it meant to me as a mom we this is her putting her imprint on these things based on her personal emotions and she feels since she's always been affirmed of how important she is with, the, with these things mm -hmm. that we all should care about this like did they get did they grab six dudes out of the hub pub and drag them into a focus group no and like. I've been in focus groups, and I really said what I meant. I was in one for vodka at one time, which, no, there was no free vodka. <laughs> but there's a reason why they want... The focus group to be made of people that the might potentially consume the product. Exactly. Not some, you know... Uh, like, not some prancing, like, four-pack holding craft beer... Brooklyn loft dwelling animal. That's not. That's not Bud Light. Unless they want to try to get them to go to Bud Light, but they're not going to go to Bud Light. Not as currently constituted, unless it's a battleground for LGBTQ plus rights. Oh my goodness, Alice. What? Oh no no no. Okay, what? so we've got to. How do I deal with this? Mm hmm. So well, uh, she has some more good quotes in here. So am I allowed to keep reading this or not? Yes. It's just that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Yes, please keep reading. Um, so she says, when we looked at the job to be done attracting new drinkers, we started out with who we are and what do we stand for. We'd been pretty inconsistent in our messaging over the years, and we need to establish who we are and consistently message this in years to come. I don't know that there's been a lot of consistency, but... To determine this, Heiner Chide and her team went back in the brand's history to August Bush III, who 41 years ago developed an easy-to-drink light beer. That's one of our core truths, our reason for existing, she says. Ha, 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 ha. The idea behind both commercials... Wait, what was his, his core, core truth? His core truth was that it's an easy-to-drink light beer. 
Did Oz, Bud Light came out in like Let 1981? Me, okay. 41 years ago, okay. he developed it. So uh, do we think he would have enjoyed the Dylan Mulvaney ads? I do not think so. Um. So let's see. This article is from February. Uh, the idea behind the commercials is to take it easy and choose enjoyment over what could be frustrating moments. The brand's only two weeks into this new marketing strategy, and fans are already talking about it on social media, Heinerscheid said. They're noticing that it's different and unexpected, but still feels like Bud Light, she says, of the first spot in the playoffs. The commercials, she says, are still humorous, but they show that the brand is moving away from the jokester slapstick humor to more sly and sophisticated humor. Oh, that's humor. fantastic. In other words, from guy humor to not student funny students, humor. We know the best right. strategy sly and sophisticated for college humor. is to first look am, for scholarships. Sorry, you know, that's I, why I'm we're giving away a $5,000 I do remember scholarship the, to what's happening right I'm, I, 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 So what's happening is this. Tim Sorry. and Canton is going to rebut what you're saying. Okay, that's fine. And I I had the file and I forgot to save it, so I'm going to have to okay. find it again. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so, so, but He's yeah, going, this, this is, is sly good. and sophisticated humor because um, when I saw those Super Bowl commercials with the dancing people, I mean, I did think they were trendy and refreshing, but I don't know that I thought they were humorous really. But that's okay. Um, but then she says what she means here. As the number one beer in the industry, it's incumbent upon us to act like a leader and set the standard, she says. We're excited to see what 2023 brings. That is perfect. That is perfect. So two months later, we're already seeing what 2023 is bringing to Bud Light. It's bringing Kid Rock shooting cases loans, of it with a machine gun. We know the best gun, strategy so. for paying for college ready to be, is to first look for uh, scholarships. Be, uh, I'm ready to be rebutted by Tim and Canton. Okay. Okay. Google's time solution. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why they keep doing this. And guy named Glenn Lingarini. Who I feel like through affirmative action. Well, I'm I'm fortunate. We can put this to bed. Biological woman. You can. So don't worry about that anymore. This. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whole thing. They're sick of the. Where where are these? Okay, Tim. Maybe or for I'm beer. Claw. I sorry. I gotta keep my claw. Truly. Or they're uh, drinking local beers like Cigar City in yep. Tampa, or mm -hmm. Three Daughters. Bre there you go. It's, it's it's paused. It's paused. Yes. <sighs> Do you want to play more of Elisa's video? Well. I mean, no, go ahead, read more. No, that's it. I'm finished with the article now, so we can listen to the rest of her video okay. version. Of okay. It has food trucks and a tent outside. Yeah. It's all under 40. They're not drinking yeah, but, Bud Light. Rudy, I assume the stuff get... in that food truck is about 11 bucks per hit. No. They're happy. Yeah, but they're, 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 Hold on. like, Sorry, guys. even in Connecticut, they're drinking Thimble. It's just a sad. And you know, Tom. Through affirmative action. Invading their locker rooms, invading their bathrooms. No, no it's Steve hanging out with gay people. Back oh. at our culture. It's not attack. But what do you think the kids under 30 are drinking? Okay, ready? I think they're drinking uh, hard is seltzer. Is Or who is it? No. Oh. Or for... No. Okay, I'm going to make good... I'm going to make this up to you, okay? Okay. I just got to get to Tim and Canton. Damn it, I well, didn't have it ready. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's not you. <laughs> I apologize. Hey, you know what, kid? <laughs> I don't feel bad. I'll find it. Okay. There's going to be complaints about this. Yeah, I know. On Twitter. I know. I know. Okay. Bye bye, Bud Light today. This is it. This is it. Okay, guys. Now I'm going to get it. A college F student. Now I'm going to get it. I hope you're ready. Be Everyone's prepared. ready. Everyone's just like breathless with anticipation right now. To be just dying to hear Tim and Canton. Be prepared to be shocked. Okay. I'm so ready to be shocked. It's kind of sexy, Ells. Okay. Be prepared. Here we go. Here's Tim. Okay. Definitely Wait, disagree. Bud... Customers of Bud Light are really dumb. Completely disagree with you. Here we go, Tim. Okay. This is the rebuttal. The great Tim and Canton. Okay. I apologize for everything that you guys just sat through. But this is worth it. Here's it Tim and Kenton's okay. case, Alice, and I want you to rebut Tim. Go right ahead, sir. 
I have zero problem with what this woman has done. She is 100% right. Looking at it from a business standpoint, you made a comment that, yay, now the, now the beer is gay. I contend, mm-hmm. my friend, Bud Light has been for gays and girls since it was in, in its inception. Are you the sure you're not, is, thinking, not, you're not thinking of Schmidt's gay? No, <laughs> great commercial. You know, that Absolutely. Is, That's where I'm at now. Yes, I Alice. I always refer to Bud Light as the great equalizer. God, that's great. Now I'm You taught me about absolutely that turned on, on by you knowing about that. <laughs> that's great. Okay. So what happens when you go to a party, you know, like I, I like Miller Light, Coors Light, uh, excuse me, Corona Light, people right. like Coors Light. But you know what people always buy because it's the one everybody can tolerate? Bud Light? I guess. Yeah, because it's just like water. It's urine. It's terrible. And nobody... Nobody's going to die on the Bud Light Hill like they would die on the – I've been in arguments about Miller Lite. uh, Oh, I disagree. Oh, totally disagree. Oh, please. Totally disagree. You can drink a 12-pack of Bud Light and drive and not have a problem. (laughs) I'm not sure we should endorse (laughs) that. (laughs) We obviously – we're obviously kidding. Uh, But no, I know. But but Tim, I don't contend that Bud Light's a great-tasting beer. In the, you know, I don't order it, but it is there is a place for crap beer, and it's fairly well, cheap. See, but this, but that's different. So when you say crap beer, I think you know we're almost the same age. We're mm-hmm. thinking differently. What do you? Well, it's actually become nouveau type of uh, beer drinking. Do you remember the crap beers when we were growing up? Like Natty Light, uh, mm-hmm. like yep. Keystone. Like I mean, that yep. was the. That was the beer that the case was like cardboard paper. It wasn't even yeah. like, it was you know, a little bit. That, that guess what category. Point. You know, we we all we all drank it. We all knew people who who got older and still drank it mm-hmm. and would say, well, you know, they, they, that's a veteran move. That stuff is rough. Bud Light was the first bad beer that was mass marketed on people that it's just it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like music and food. Everybody has their own taste. Right. But Bud Light is is so <laughs> this is going to be a strange word to use it's so inoffensive that anybody could drink it but no one really was passionate now, you have people who drink it all the time but they're not they're not passionate about it um no i think i don't I, have a problem with it yeah well first of all I, the people who are passionate about it in my experience are passionate about drinking 30 at a time <laughs> and, correct Right. right. Not drinking Bud Light, but 30 at a time. And why do they drink 30 at a time? Because it's the easiest one to put down. It, it, right. it was a phenomenal – because remember remember when we were young, Bud, which I, th- I always thought was terrible, Budweiser? Yep. Um, Budweiser was the king of beers. Budweiser owned the beer market. And when that started declining and light beer came into vogue, which, by the way, did you know Amstel Light was never a light beer? They just keeps – what are people buying more and more of? i got to admit – I, um, what's the one Portnoy? Um, oh yeah, uh, high what's, noon. What's, yeah, sunrise. High noon. high noon, right? right. High noon. I right. like those. I don't like Trulies or the other one. Mm-hmm. I actually like, you know, it, it, that to me. Well, I think high noons are. A I would cocktail, rather have not a malt beverage. Than a Bud Light on a hot day, I drink a Miller Light, or I'll have now like a high, high noon. High noons are also she, way expensive. I, I'm, though, I'm not too. faulting her Here for. Who's this? We're all talking about it. Her job as a marketing executive mm-hmm. is to make sure, even if her product is terrible, that we're talking about it. She has achieved the goal. She really has. I disagree. From a business Tim. standpoint. I, I think this is new Coke. I mean, she's effed with something. And I don't but think what? she realized. But, first of all, she's, first of all she, you can tell by the way she talks that she has not had the experience. So what do you think about that? So uh, I know that that's a school of thought. Mm-hmm. That we're talking about Bud Light, so she won. Dylan Mulvaney's post went viral. Everyone's talking about them. The right has made Dylan Mulvaney a celebrity. They're making him money. This is working for those people. I I tend to think that when you get in the news for literally dissing your core customer, as we will get to in her audio there, because we haven't played that part yet, um, where she insults their sense of humor and calls them fratty. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I 
I think that you do, and especially as he's kind of saying, where it's like not a product that people are like really married to having Bud Light, most people, you know? And the people who are are not the type of people that she's talking about. The type of people that you and I know who are like my age, who are, who think Mil Dylan Mulvaney's great, are, you know, they're the type of people who are bringing a four pack of beers to a party. Right. And if they drink two, are bringing the other two home. Right. They're not Bud Light drinkers. They're not going to fill a cooler with these. And also, I tend to think, you know, they're, she's saying, like, we need to attract new drinkers. We need to attract a younger customer. This isn't, like, trendy and hip anymore, which I get. But I don't think those people are going to ever drink Bud Light. No. I don't think they care to. No. I, you know, I, I don't think... I don't think it's something where you go out and buy Bud Light because they have a gay person. No, Bud Light is like McDonald's to these people. They don't understand it. They wouldn't do it. It's not healthy to them. It's not marketed aesthetically to look It's in the fat good. can, not the tall skinny can or, right, the, exactly. or the big it's craft not a, it's beer not a, can. It's, it's, it's not, not a four-pack that's done with, uh, with, um, uh, with locally sourced um, ingredients and hops, etc. There's no story behind Bud Light, you know? Right. There's no ESG score behind. Well, now there is, of course. Now there's big. Well, that's what they're going for right. is the ESG score and stuff like that. And that's, I mean, and she's going to do fine because she's going to talk about how many impressions this ad campaign got. And she's going to get, you know, some wokeness awards and get to go give TED Talks about this brilliant ad campaign, just like she gets interviewed by Forbes about it. And she's going to continue to fail upwards. But what they're going to leave in their wake is a 40 plus year old brand that will no longer have customers attached to it. Right. And and I could totally see that because basically it's like bass boats, um, bass pro shops. You know, it's saying F you to the customers. It's, it's, I mean, you're So really Tommy in New Hampshire says he knows a lot of guys who are married to Bud Light and passionate about it and that Tim is wrong on this one. I, I'm there with you, Tim. I, I don't, But I think what Tim is saying is... You mean with Tommy? Tommy, no, no. What I think Tim was saying, Tommy, is but that you were with Tommy. You said yes, but okay. I think what you Tim said with is, Tim. Okay, I Sorry. can say things, self. So I'm ready to say. Okay, okay, <laughs> go ahead and say. What I'm saying is, I think what Tim is saying is that nobody's passionate about Bud Light because it's the best tasting beer there is. People love Bud Light. It's a thirty pack. You can kill a lot of them. And it, when cold, it you know it tastes as good as anything else, and I I think that that's people it, it, kind of like McDonald's, you know mm -hmm. it's consistent, it's there, it's cheap, it's not total swill, and it can you can dress it up, it can taste, but and, but and mm -hmm. I and I agree, I've also got, I've also got friends who like love their Bud Light and only drink Bud Light and. And and would whack out thirty packs on weekends, etc. I don't know that they ever did it for necessarily the taste, but it was a good. It's a good drinker's beer. It really is. Um, I mean, but maybe there are some. I mean, people have different different stories. Some people maybe just love. I my my friend, who I'm not going to name, um, forever has always loved Bud bottles. Got to be Bud bottles. Bud bottles. And this is since high school, since we were drinking illegally. Always Bud bottles. Or he just wouldn't drink anything. Bud bottle, Bud bottle, Bud bottle. You know, people who have their favorite beer. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I guess I was a Bud Dry guy a long time ago, but <laughs> but it was any port in the storm, really. I was, you know, I was not a beer connoisseur. I was looking to rock and roll. Um, um, so, but, I, but and I agree with you. It, it's, and I said this to Tim today. I don't think it helps you to put as many eyes on you as possible. To say, hey, we look down at our customer base. We look down on the people who have been, who have opted in and invested time and resources and largesse into our product for years. Hey, F you. Right. And it's like a double switch to suddenly, to suddenly, like Marlboro cigarettes were the cigarette. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a tough smoke kind of, not as tough as the filterless stuff, um, but you knew what you were getting. Mm -hmm. And it was it was like the the thing about cigarettes and even even Marlboro Lights, which I smoked. When Me you're too. a smoker, hundreds. You, 
Hundreds? You? Marlboro Light Hundreds. You? That was my preferred cigarette. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But even those those of us who were smokers, smoking for the comfort of it, the idea was that life was tough and here's a reprieve. And is it killing us? Maybe, but Christ, it feels good at the moment. And sometimes life is about feeling good at the moment and we're doing it now. And it wasn't... Like Marlboro Light never said to me, no, what 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 we mean is not that, you know, take this moment to enjoy life. What we really mean to you, Tom, is that you're gay um, and that you need to be <laughs> gallivanting around P-Town or smoking more effeminately than you. It's like, what? That's not what it was. People personalize Did they tell it. you in their ads that you had a bad sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> well, there was no cigarette ads, of course, by the time I was... Oh, right. Uh, but, but it's it's this thing... You are people who have are Bud Light drinkers. Like I was recently at a funeral for a guy who m- most of the people who I knew who have who enjoy Bud Light by the thirty pack are n- out and are now either in recovery or but but, but we're all in our fifties or some have passed away. Um, but maybe that explains it, their declining customer base. Well, maybe maybe not. Who knows? But here's the thing: is that. Like, for instance, there's a friend of mine who passed away, and there's all sorts of – we saw like a, pictures of the last 40 years of this guy having a good time with friends, with wife, with family, etc. And he's always holding a Bud Light. And did Bud Light, you know, help with his demise? Maybe. But then again, Bud Light was there for every wonderful moment of this guy's life. And so that's when people, like, internalize a lot of the stuff. For a lot of people – and I was saying this earlier – for a lot of people – Bud Light, or the beer you choose is when men commiserate, or with your in a date, whatever, that's your go-to, like, comfort cocktail. Mm-hmm. And it's guys talking about how much work sucks, or how much they're in love, or how much, whatever, or whatever, around a burn barrel, or, you know, wherever, with their beer. And for her, because she doesn't have those experiences... To look down on those guys and say, hey, trash, you guys seem like you're fratty. It's old humor. You need to change. Change the way you talk around the burn barrel. You probably I'm in don't charge know, of but burn we're barrel. an industry leader, and it's incumbent yes. upon us to light the way to yes. the bold new future of Dylan I know Dylan you guys Mulvaney's have worked 60 there. hours a week this week, and you're trying to just unwind on a Friday night with each other and going through life, and it sucks for you. But my passion point is at play here. So... I I need to redo this. I I don't like what you're doing. Like we look down on you with your burn barrels. It's like, yeah. I mean, I do love her though. <laughs> I mean, the big teeth. It's big teeth. You still never played the oh, end of the clip okay. where she's saying the fratty okay. stuff and whatever. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Does the Dylan Mulvaney campaign appeal to? Anybody? No. First of all, he <laughs> I, no. He's insulted women by calling them dumb ditzes who don't know what March Madness is and can't carry beers. Well, right. And he's thrown off his uh, manhood proudly. Now he's a girl, so he's a girl jumping around a hotel suite. He's only insulting to men. Only insulting to, to, I mean, she's so excited about this for her. You can tell Mm -hmm. this is where usually her parents say, oh, my goodness, Elisa, you're so smart. You're so out of the box. But she is not. And by the way, I was listening to the Jerry show today. He talked about he he and eight of his friends were at the Bruins game. They do it every year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they none of them ordered Bud Light this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one thing I've never asked when I've gone up and ordered beer. Is, uh, what type it is? Yeah, do you have any inclusive beers? Do you have? <laughs> what's the most of all the? Oh, you have on tap. What's the most equitable one you have? I don't know. You don't ask that question. Beer drinkers don't give a flying holy f about the inclusive beer. All these people, you know, wear, you know, sports uh, uh, accessories made by slaves, and they're wanting to make sure the beer's inclusive. Right. Inclusive? Get the. Freak out of my bar, you freaking weirdo. <laughs> Inclusive. F the F off. 
Mm-hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we. <laughs> First of all, in the work. Who the but... holy F does that dude. Who sees ref... themselves in Dylan Mulvaney? No one I've like ever Dylan met. Mulvaney. Yeah. And not even him. I mean, I don't even. But she's like revving herself up here and she's smiling with her big, beautiful teeth. He had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of. I think she is so. And by the way, she's acting as if this is impromptu, but you can tell by her press release that this is stuff she's. This is Practiced her spiel. all these phrases. This is her yeah. hiring speech that she. Mm-hmm. And she's so proud of using the word hangover. Right. Get it? Of fratty kind of out of touch humor and it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach so oh, i'm a bit fratty she says in other words that's guys mm-hmm. toxic masculinity those are guys you don't want fratty no, no 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 fratty young men having fun gregarious enjoying life out of touch humor right right and, and what that humor would be something we call funny humor right no how no many, more of that out what of do touch you think humor her humor is like uh, like Amy Schumer's humor, probably. Uh, correct. Like the new Ghostbusters. So I know when this happened at the time, I always, I always, I blew it off because I'm like, I don't really get this. What's happening? But this is what she's talking about essentially, and this is effing hilarious. Pick up good yardage on the play. You know the best part of this defense is their defensive line and their interior. Hello. Right hey who? What's up? None be just watching the game, having a bud. So but you? None. Watching game, having a butt. True. True. What's that? What's that? Yo, who's that? Yo! Yo, pick up the phone! Hello? What's that? What's that? Yeah. Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie! Yo. What's that? What's that? <laughs> it's... Idiots. Mm-hmm. But you know what it is? And and I remember at the time a little bit, you know, it, it's 16 years old now. To me, that's like just mm-hmm. yesterday. But but you know what it is? Right. It's the f- freaking vibe of being dumb and bonding with your other dude. Unwinding, saying, F it, let's have fun. That's it. Let's have fun. There's no passion points. There's no uh, inclusivity. There's no, as a matter of Do fact. Do people see themselves reflected? I, I don't know, but it's, you know what's funny? <laughs> I didn't realize till now that everybody in this commercial is black. Because you see yourself reflected, even though they're black. Yes. I like everything about these guys. Mm-hmm. I would like, it's like, that is a good thing for a brand. We're having a good effing time. We're hanging out. We're in, in we're being dumb and we're liking it. Something that's old fratty. Oh my goodness! I heard you know that she walked this through college more sly, and, and you know what humor. she had to deal with dudes saying "What's up?" around frats, and she was like, "Oh my goodness! Why do I have to hear this?" Oh goodness! All right, where to next, Alby? Um. Well, did you see any of the Dylan Mulvaney Jeffrey Marsh thing? Oh Speaking God, I saw it, but Mulvaney. I'm so afraid of Jeffrey Marsh. I'm afraid he's gonna be hovering over. Well, me. it says a be- lot. <laughs> It doesn't lot to me that Dylan Mulvaney would even hang out with Jeffrey Marsh because that dude is like a walking human red flag. Uh, yes. So for, I mean, like it says to me a lot about what you, your vision of transness is. A red flag, hang- not only that, but he's got this like scowly look and weird like incisor teeth. He are- definitely looks like he might be a cannibal or something. Yes. Girlhood becomes yes. stronger when there's more of us behind behind it. Only certain people are allowed in, but who's allowing? That's the real question. Who Do is you know? I I don't. Maybe there isn't one. <laughs> and maybe that's maybe the beautiful there part one. of it. Do you have any relationship to the concept of girlhood? I absolutely do. I find girlhood to be inspiring. There are a lot of human beings who are girls who transcend what their gender is supposed to be. Yes. And that to me is something I draw strength from and excitement from. Absolutely. <laughs> and I hope this uh, is the start of a- Don't draw anything from me, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> don't draw strength from me. Definitely don't draw excitement from me. Don't draw blood from me. Whatever it is that you're into, Jeffrey. And definitely don't lecture me on girlhood. The fact that Dylan Mulvaney hangs out with that person makes me, like, anybody who hangs out with Jeffrey Marsh and produces TikToks with him should be on a list. Correct. Speaking of on a list, uh, the uh, John Kirby is sick of these Pentagon papers being out there. Oh, can Again, I say one more thing before okay. we move off Dylan Mulvaney? Because Tommy in the chat says that Dylan has a new contract with Olay. And I did see this. And I do buy Olay moisturizer, mostly because the brand that I really like, love, love, I have to order online. And it's a pain. Um, and Olay is like right there in the store. Um, but no more. I'm going to go back nice. to ordering my really super good skincare that I adore from Nashville, where I don't think the brand has ever lectured me. From Nashville. One time There is on... a great, great... Um, well, you got to trust Southern women with their skincare. There's a great lawmaker know? down in Nashville, Alice. So I want there, to... Yeah. So, And they've never once on social media or on their website lectured me about politics, girlhood, gun control. Well, trans, you're about to get a, a, a sermon rights. by my friend, State Rep Justin Pearson, who gave an Easter sermon. Who um, He's one of the two kind of punks, the three of the three punks. These guys have been long activists, disrupting stuff, whatever. They were thrown out of the Republican State House of Representatives. Uh, the Republicans tossed him and his buddy out. One of them has been brought back, and I assume they mm -hmm. both will be. But listen to this sermon, Alice. Do you think that perhaps he's borrowing? As our own brothers and sisters lay to rest because of the failure of people in positions of power to do something. Because people are refusing to pass just laws to end the epidemic of gun violence in the state of Tennessee. My people have yet to quit. And so even now, amidst this boat, amidst this... He has seen the glory. The good news. Yeah, I would say so. Hallelujah, Jesus. I remember that on Friday, the government decided that my Savior Jesus, a man that was innocent of all crimes except fighting for the poor, Fighting for the marginalized, fighting for the LGBTQ community, what? fighting for Jesus those... did that? Yes, he was, yeah, he was fighting for the LGBTQ community. Okay. What, what Bible did you read? Uh, the Come one on. where he tells them that they're going to have, uh, they would prefer to have a millstone around their neck <laughs> than the one, <laughs> that one? <laughs> I don't like that at all. So I'm going to move on here to Joe Biden. His, it's Easter, uh, the Easter egg roll happened. So th this is a fantastic event, one of my favorites of the year. I was just wondering, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, will you be uh, taking part in the Easter egg rolls uh, after planning on after 2024? Well, I plan on <laughs> at least three or four more Easter egg rolls. At least three or four more? Maybe, maybe, maybe five. Maybe five? <laughs> maybe maybe so, six. So what the hell? Are you, are you saying that, uh, that you would be uh, taking part in uh, our upcoming election in 2024? Well, I'll leave I'll, be, I'll either be rolling an egg or you know being the the good you know the guy who's pushing them out. Come on, help a bro help a brother out. Make no, some news no, for no, me. No, no, no. Well, I, I plan on running out, but we're not prepared to announce it yet. All right. Well, I th so nice. I, I, thank you for having well, us good, up here. Good to be here. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, good to be here. <laughs> Jesus, he's not doing well. Uh, who was it I was listening to? A.B. Stoddard. Jonah Goldberg said he's, there's no way he's running. Really? Mm -hmm. She thinks that he's. One that he's got this guy Zinke Jeffrey Zients running the mm -hmm. um, his, as chief of staff, and Zients is a is a like a D minus guy in DC, mm -hmm. and would not be the guy if they wanted to get new policy stuff on. You wouldn't have him there. He's just gonna like land the plane with Biden. And that's it. And that, so, who do they put in? Like Newsom? Yeah, yeah. And also, she mentioned that like Biden came down in the DC crime law. And mm -hmm. also did some energy stuff, which is sticking it to the AOC's contingent. And she just thinks that there's there's no way. And I kind of... He's pretty darn old. He's old, and he's not just not doing... He's not doing well. Also, the... Uh, Ry um, hold on. R Riley Gaines, the swimmer mm -hmm. we talked about last week. I don't think we did talk about her on the show, about her oh, being know? attacked at SFSU. Uh, she was in San Francisco, and a bunch of people came after her. She's standing up for women's rights to be able to compete right. without having a dude compete with them. So a mob attacked them, and some dude in the dress sucker punched her, I think at least twice. And then 
extorted them, demanded they hid in the room, her and security, and demanded that they pay money if they wanted to be given safe passage out of the place. And she missed her flight. She was gone for three hours. And these bullies, um, you know, raised hell. So San Francisco University, listen to this, Jamila Moore, SFU's Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, emailed a statement Saturday to the university that didn't, that it, this is the email that she sent. Thank you to our students who participated peacefully in Thursday <laughs> evening's event. It took tremendous bravery to stand in a challenging space. What? <laughs> yep. She's, these people attacked a little blonde They girl. were a mob. Yes. She said, I am proud of the moments where we listened and asked insightful questions. I'm also proud of the moments when our students demonstrated the value of free speech and the right to protest peacefully. These issues do not go away, and these values are very much at our core. It's incredible. My goodness. So, Riley Gaines has... I don't... I mean, I have no patience for mobs whatsoever. Riley Gaines has responded to this. I was made aware of the email last night. And, uh, obviously, very general, but go in any direction you feel like. What was your immediate reaction? When I saw this email, um, one of my friends who goes to the university sent it to me, and I had to reread it, um, because there was clearly... No mention of what actually happened. Anything that actually occurred, there was no mention of it. Um, what they described in that email was how proud they were of their brave students who protested peacefully. What I experienced was peaceful. Um, it, it wouldn't even be peaceful in an alternate universe. I mean, it was quite literally the exact opposite. Barricaded in a room where I could not leave for three hours where they were yelling obscene, terrible um, violent things towards both myself and these officers who were um, protecting me. Um, it was atrocious. It was heinous. It was terrible. I missed my flight home. I couldn't fly home um, because I was stuck in this room where there was no exit. Um, they blocked the stairways, so there was no exiting. So there you go. The the punks and thugs, um, you know, got their way and managed to escape yeah. any kind of judgment. You know. I've gotten a lot of flack from people on the right for saying that I'm, like, not really upset about what happened to Ashley Babbitt. Mm -hmm. Um, Because she was part of a mob that was, you know, breaking through doors and where they weren't supposed to be to bother Congress people um, when they knew they weren't supposed to be there. And people with guns were telling them not to burst through the broken glass door. I'm fine with that in any mob. I'm fine with Kent State. Jesus, Alice. <laughs> Jesus. I don't. I mean, like, I'm. I don't like mobs. I think mobs are bad. Alice, I don't know that Kent State was necessarily a mob. It was. Didn't people. they throw stuff at the people? Maybe, Alice. But the mm. the National Guard or wherever they had guns. I mean, they were vastly outgunned. Okay. I'm fine with Kent State. I won't call it that. I actually said the same thing to my dad 30 years ago <laughs> as a teenager, and he was very upset at me. Oh. I'm fine with Kent State. Jesus Christ. You are such and a... And I'm fine with the guy in Texas who the uh, mm -hmm. the governor wants to pardon. Not in the clock tower, right? No, the one that the governor wants to pardon because a mob attacked him in his car yeah. with a gun, and he shot the guy with a gun. Right. And I'm fine with Kyle Rittenhouse. And like, I mean, like, I just I have no patience for mobs. Yeah. No, mo no mobs. God, we should have started here. <laughs> Here's John Kirby saying, stop looking at the leaked Pentagon documents. He's had enough of this. Again, without confirming the validity of the documents, this is information that has no business in the public domain. It has no business, if you don't mind me saying, uh, on the pages of, uh, of uh, front pages of, of newspapers or uh, on television. It is not so intended for public uh, consumption, uh, and it should not be out there. Again, without confirming the wow, validity of go. the documents, this we is information that has no business. All uh, right. I do Alice. enjoy that, and I do enjoy all the people who are like, hang the traitors for releasing the stuff. And there was this one person, I think I sent you this today. Where was it? It's like way back this morning. It just made me laugh because in one of the threads about the whole thing, about the leaked documents and everything, this one person replied and said... Um, 
Oh, darn, can I find it? He said, like, call me a patriot, but I'm not going to read anything marked top secret that I don't have a clearance to view. That's great. Like, oh, yeah, I guess we'll call you a patriot for refusing to read the stuff that's now out in public that everybody's talking about. Like, good for you. Really helping national security there by not looking at it. People suck. Except for people involved with Chelsea Fire, we could also ask, which is gone Hollywood, by the way. Look at this baby. Very fancy. Here's very the fancy. New one. Get your new old packaging. ones while the last guys. The, the same new ones. Chelsea Fire hot sauce you know and love, but uh, it might be a little bit different. Is it possibly a little bit different? It is gone big time. So, but yes, we still love it. Obviously, yes. But, yes, the, the ingredients have changed a little, a little bit. But it's still all compliant with the week when we lost. Get the old ones while they last, guys. And then here was the new one here. The packaging is lovely. They've hit the big time. i got to talk to John, my friend, about getting some more here. Man, that's nice. Oh, this one has the Scoville units on it. Yeah, this is what's happening. Very fancy. Yeah. Scoville. This is, a, this is because they're becoming an established national brand. 8,790 Scoville units. Vegan, gluten-free. Good. Good looking hot sauce. All right. You ready? Ready. I only have two. Okay. Two takeaways from yesterday's show on Easter. Um, thank you for doing that. You guys actually did great. One was the appearance. Hold on. Is that a goat? I don't know. We're hearing a goat. Yesterday's show on Easter. Um, thank you for doing that. You guys actually did great one was the appearance of chewbacca on your show and um was that Cyril yelling for some reason you didn't give him credit you know he, oh, was, he was there chewbacca. making all kinds of sounds <laughs> and nobody even acknowledged him. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of sad oh i see okay so that's chewbacca in the background yes no cyril was very much a part of yesterday's show um the second was when tom tried to get alice to Sort of work with him on that um, restaurant slash food show you're going to be doing. And uh, he said, you know, Alice, uh, Easter. What about the food at Easter? And Alice was sort of like, yeah, there's <laughs> there's food at Easter. It's, yeah. You eat it. Oh, okay. Well, let's go on to our next segment. This is going to be great. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, Alice. For goodness. <laughs> Steve from Merrimack. Hi, Steve. Uh, Alyssa Schneider Hind, uh, <laughs> the VP of marketing for Bud Light, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who has a big Ivy League brain, yes. and, you know, all Very the education in the world and no sense. Um, my father had a saying for people like that that he used many times throughout his life, and that was educated beyond her intelligence. Thank you. That is sure true. But isn't that like what college is yeah. now? It's a bunch of people way educated beyond their intelligence. She is, and that's why I also that I like her because I can tell that she's kind of a dumb, but been coached up to try to, to talk like a smart. Mm -hmm. So she says, "Passion point, passion point." Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Um, By the way, I'd want it to be known for to Ned and everybody else that I do find Alice my most attractive, and you look great in that. You look really cute today. Thanks. You're not a you're not a human, though, <laughs> which also I like. <laughs> And that you are uh, you you stand with the uh, armed national guardsmen at Kent State is also extremely <laughs> aphrodisiac for me. I'm pro law and order. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, I forgot where I was. Anyway, if I have ready. If you want to watch live, um, you can do that at patreoncom slash burn barrel. Feel of free course, to show sign up for Patreon. By the way, uh, Mike Geary has like 500 pa Patreon listeners. Watchers, mm -hmm. whatever they are. I, I don't even know. Is he, is he even on video? He is on video, right? Yeah. They do their live streams, too, behind the paywall also. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Um. Anyway, you can do that if you want. Of course, you can always find the show for free at burnbarrelpodcast.com. Say la vie.